It's a good day to swim today. I wonder any people around. Let me double confirm. Oops, seems like no one here. Hmm, right. Today we are going to explore more about me. Guess who am I? Oops, someone's coming. Gotta go. Bye. Stay tuned. Welcome to Crayblock Present Submit Editions. Today, we are going to talk about the most popular yokai in Japan today. Today, we're going to talk about Kappa. Quick revisions of the word yokai, which we mentioned in the previous video. Uh, it means that it's a wide array of supernatural entities from monsters, uh, deity to god. Uh, and Kappa is one of them, and it's the most popular one. Now that you know that Kappa is a yokai, but in Japan, people regard it as a water spirit or the water god. Kappa is commonly depicted as a turtle-like creature and said to inhabit rivers, lakes, and ponds. Thus, when it comes to flooding and drowning around the water body, Kappa will oftentimes be taking the blame. Since the Edo period, Kappa is seen as a god, but sometimes as a monster, which we will talk about it later. There are several different Kappas uh, were recorded in ancient books and it was named differently. Reason being is some of them are slimmer, some of them is hairier, while some of them has more protruding mouth. Uh, each of their appearance looks slightly different in each region. Kappa are typically described as being the size of a human child, with green or blue skin. They have a turtle-like beak, rabbit hand and feet, and a shell on their back, something like ninja turtle. Yeah. Kappa are said to have a bow like this on their head as well, like mine. Yeah, this bowl of fate normally is filled with waters. The water is said to be the source of their power, it represents their vitality. If it spills, the kappa will become weak. It's rumored that when they are land, uh, their bowl like this will be covered by a, uh, with a metal cap. That's another interesting saying about kappa, is that they have three anuses. Boop, boop, boop. So when it spark, it will be extra flavorful. Uh? Although Kappa physique is smaller than human, it is incredibly strong and they are sumo lover. So if you wrestle with them, you might lose. Not only that, because of their webbed uh, hand and feet, they are incredible swimmer as well. A lot of yoga in Japan folklore often say to behave mischievously and this includes Kappa as well. However, Kappa, although they like to play pranks, they could be dangerous as well. They are said to have been responsible for drowning accidents back in Edo period. But not all Kappa is bad. Kappa is said to be uh, fond of cucumber, and they will often offer them to humans as a sign of friendships. Since long ago, there were mixtures of good and bad image associated with Kappa, and we are going to find out more about that next. The phrase, respect others the way you want to be respected. This phrase doesn't only apply to human, but to Kappa as well. Kappa are friendly creatures and never had the intentions to hurt people, but to befriend and help them. It is said that if you befriend a kappa, it will lend you a helping hand, such as helping farmers irrigate their lands. Not only that, they can bring you fortune if you treat them well as well. Legend has it that if a kappa brings you a fresh fish as a gift, it will always be followed by incredible fortunes. Besides, kappa has a similar role to chopper in one piece. He is a doctor and knows about medicines. So oftentimes in some folklore stories, they are often described as a savior by saving people's life if, if they are sick. Although folklore always blames Kappa for the drowning accidents, there are some who say they save humans if they were drowning. As we say just now, Kappa are mischievous creatures and even harm humans if they are not respected. 
They may look up women's kimonos if they come too close to waters or play pranks on humans who are playing in the water. However, if a kappa is disrespected and enraged, they will drown people by wrestling them in the deep waters. Some gruesome kappa will even drink the victim's blood and eat their flesh. Their favorite part is a ball-like flesh inside a human butthole. If residents in a village or town are being disrespectful, they will even kidnap children and eat them. Furthermore, there are some animals that kappa dislike, especially horses and cows, because some folklore consistently mentions that kappa will try to drown these animals and eat their flesh. Hmm, but what if I really met an angry kappa? How should I counter it? Kappa have a strong sense of politeness, so if you make a deep bow to them, they feel compelled returning you the gesture as well. Hi! Look, when they bow back to you, this causes them to spill the water on their head, leaving them stuck in a posi uh, bowing position until the dish on their head is filled with water. As we mentioned previously, the water on their head dish actually is represent to their vitality or the source of power. If you lend the couple a helping hand by refilling the dish, the water into, the, uh, into their dish, the couple will become indebted to you and serve you forever. There's a second way that you can defeat a kappa. Uh, another weakness of the kappa involves its arms, which can be easily pulled off. If you manage to detach one of its arms, the kappa will be willing to do you favors and share its knowledge in exchanging for getting its arms back. But do this on the line, not in the water. You can't out with a kappa in the water. Yes. You really want to find a kappa? I would suggest you there's a few places that you might spot them. Legend has it that kappa made their homes in the Kawabuchi waters of Tono in Iwate prefectures. In fact, there's a temple called Jokenji in Tono that pays tribute to these mischievous creatures. The temple features Komainu dog statues with hollow on their back resembling the dish-like structure found on Kappa's hat. These statues are believed to be dedicated to a Kappa that once came to the temple's aid by helping them to put out a fire. In Tono Monogatari, the folklore compilation book that we mentioned in the previous videos also talk about um, the records of Kappa's. It was believed that Kappa impregnated some women back in the days and the infants wouldn't survive more than a few days and eventually would be buried in the land of Tono. What dimensions that Kappa homeland actually is similar to the origin of Sashiki Hiroshi. If you haven't catched the episode, click this. There's one particular famous Kappa who has been called the king of Kappa, Kuzembo. He built a clan back in the Yellow River in China and had over 9,000 clan members and they've been called as Kuzembo clan. It was says that the clan is still staying in the Chikugo rivers but due to water pollution on a global scale, the number of members has significantly decreased. So, save Kuzembo and stop pollutions! <laughs> but the list doesn't stop there. Do you want to see a real kappa? Kappa Mami at Matsuura Brewery was discovered 50 years ago and it was passed down for generations. Currently, it is stored in a small auto in Matsuura Brewery. It's a fun activity to tea sake while visiting the kappa. The second on the list is the Kappa Mami at Tsuruji Temple in Osaka. It's a 70 cm long Kappa Mami found in 1682. If you were visiting in uh, Osaka, how about pay the kappa visit? The next on the list is Kappa Mami in Leiden, Netherlands. It is slightly special as various anime parts are put together and hold for this Kappa Mami. Uncertain if it born this way or later modified into this state. The last one is the kappa hat that can be found in Sogenji Buddhist Temple in Asakusa, Tokyo. In June 2014, they used to display this kappa mummy's hands in Miyakonojo Shimazu residence. It was says 
that um, this kappa was shot back in 1880 near Mimata town. You know, Japan has a lot of festivals and they wouldn't miss a kappa. For Japan kappa fans, there's a festival called Kappa Matsuri Festival, which is to honor the mythical kappa blessed with good harvest. Uh, this festival is held during the summer in a few locations, Tokyo, Ushiku, Komaki, and Misawa. And so that's it for the story of kappa. This yokai series wouldn't stop after Sajiki Warashi and also kappa. There's more to come. And guys, if you like this topic, if you like this channel, please click the subscribe button down there. If you like this video as well, give me a like. I in need of subscribers. Please, I'll keep doing this video. Yokai mythology, ghost, monster, whatever it is. Oh, and next week, I might do some history as well. That's going to be an interesting one. Oh, don't forget me. Come back to my channel next week. And I'm going to talk about another mythology. So, bye!